when God bless you, your own blessing will be without sorrow. Amen. It will be without sickness. Amen. It will be with joy and with peace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, the, so we looked at the first way to unlock it. Number one, know that it is God's will. Number two, know that it's, it's a choice. It's a choice you have to make. You see, I said before you, life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life that you may what? May live. Choose the blessing so that you can be blessed. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. Choose the blessing. Choose the blessing. So the blessing is a choice. The blessing is never by force. God never forces a blessing on a person. You have to choose to be blessed. And your choices are reflected in your thoughts, your words, your actions. You have to choose your thoughts. You have to choose your words. You have to choose your attitude. There are attitudes that make for blessing. Hallelujah. You have to choose. A, you, have a, you have to have an attitude. Oh, I'm, I'm a blessing going somewhere to happen. I'm somebody that is expecting the blessing. So you have to have an attitude for it. Your actions also are your choice. What you do. Choose to serve God. That's why we serve God. You say you shall serve the Lord and he shall bless your bread and your water. So your blessing, your, the blessing is a choice. Someone say, I choose to be blessed. I choose to be blessed. Say, say I choose to be blessed. I yeah, when you choose to be blessed, no devil can stop you from being blessed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, the devil does not have the power to override your choice. Amazingly, even God does not override your choice. God has given us free choice, free will. You choose. If that's why I say choose. If he wants to make, make us choose, he will have forced us to choose. Yeah, he can, God can never make you to choose anything. That's why I say it, concerning Jesus, God having raised him up, sent him to bless us. But he came to his own, and his own received him not. But as many has received him, to them he gave power to become blessed, to become successful. So he didn't force everybody to receive Jesus. Otherwise, everybody will have received Jesus. Every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess, you know, in the, in the final day. But it's better you do it by choice. Amen. Can I hear you? Amen. So the blessing is a choice. That's the second key, and we've looked at that. Uh, then we looked at also the third, which is also, because it's a combination lock, and I said to us, we need to have a mindset of a vault. When you want to open a vault, there are different locks that you have to make sure they are all uh, in, uh, synchronizing. Yeah. In harmony, they have to synchronize. They have to be, you know, you have to put this, put that, put that, and then you are heading there. So, but if you miss any of the quotes, you can't go further. Hallelujah. So all of them are important. There is no one that is not important. It's my father's will for me to be blessed. That's very important. That's God's will for me. Some people say, oh, maybe I don't know whether God's will for me is to be broke or to be cursed. You know? You see, so once you don't know that it is your father's will to be blessed, the enemy can come and sell you a dummy. You know? Because you don't know what it is. Like he sold uh, Eve. Eve a dummy. He sold Eve a dummy. He said, did God say you should not eat of all the trees? Eve didn't know, she didn't hear from God, so she didn't know what, what it was. It's, the Bible never said Adam was deceived. Eve was deceived. Adam was never deceived. Adam followed something else. He just couldn't resist what his wife was offering. <laughs> but he was never deceived. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, then the second one we said it was what your choice, and then we looked at the third one, which is the uh, obedience. Yes, if they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. We looked at that. So if you go to our you know, YouTube channel, Facebook page, check all these messages, it's going to be a blessing to you. But today, my God, <laughs> we want to look at the next code, combination code. It's, they are all closely uh, related. How, what, how can I unlock my father's blessings? Today, we are looking at, you need to hearken to his voice. Hearken to the voice of the Lord. That's an archaic word, but it simply means to diligently listen to the voice of God. If you want to assess the Father's blessing, learn to listen, to pay attention to the voice of the Lord. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 and 2. Are you ready? Yes, you told me to the eight verse one and two. This is going to be very interesting. He said, "It shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord." Oh, say the voice of the Lord. Oh, say the voice of the Lord. 
if thou shalt hearken diligently, that means if you listen, pay attention to the voice of the Lord, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth, above all people. You're going to go high if you begin to listen to the voice of the Lord and to obey. And all these blessings, verse 2, shall come on thee and overtake you. I prophesy, blessings will overtake you. They will come on you, they will overtake you. Blessings will begin to chase you down. Everywhere you go, blessings will follow you. Blessings will happen in your life. You're going to, blessings, you're going to be empowered to succeed. You're going to thrive, blossom, flourish in the face of all adverse situations. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. Hello, somebody. Give me the amplifier version, please, if you can. The 21 and 2. Now it shall be if you diligently listen to. You see the word there? Diligently listen to and obey the voice of the Lord your God. And be careful to observe his commandment, which I command you today. The Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth, all people, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you pay attention to the voice of the Lord your God. Pay attention to God's voice. God speaks. Many people don't pay attention to the voice of the Lord. Some don't even know the voice of the Lord, but God speaks. Hello, somebody. God will be speaking to you. You need to learn to pay attention to his voice. In fact, I will say to us, your greatest asset in life is to recognize, to cultivate a hearing to the voice of God, to know the voice of God, and to recognize his voice. That's our greatest asset in life. Can I hear you? Amen. Our greatest, someone say, my greatest asset is to cultivate a knowing, a hearing for the voice of the Lord and to respond to his voice. You see, you need to know the voice of God. You know, a whole lot of people, hey, are you see here, a whole lot of people know the voice of their favorite musician, the voice of their favorite actors or whatever influencer they have in their lives. When they come on radio and say, oh, this is so, 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 and so. This is they know the voice of their actor. They, oh, this even if they are saying oh, this is the voice of whatever. But many people also, or I will say many. Okay, I'll just say I will say many people. A whole lot of people. I don't know which one is better to say. Which one is safer for me? <laughs> a whole lot of people don't know the voice of God, yes, sir. even in the church. Yes, sir. Many come to church, but they don't know the voice of God. Hello, somebody. Amen. Yeah. So our greatest uh, desire, if you want to prosper, is to learn the voice of God. So if you hearken diligently to His voice, all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you. So how do you, how do you, how do you get the blessings to come upon you when you don't even know the voice, when you are not even listening, when the person is not listening to the voice, when the person cannot recognize the voice? So we have to cultivate, you know, uh, a desire to, 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 to hear his voice. How do we do that? He said in John chapter 10, verse number 27, he said, My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them and they follow me. My sheep. So that means we need to cultivate a sheep-like mentality. We need to become his sheep. We need to know that we are his sheep. The Bible says we are the sheep of his pasture. We didn't create our own ourselves. He created us. Psalm 100 and verse number 3. Know you not that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, not we ourselves. We are his people, what? And the sheep of his pastor. Pastor, God is a shepherd. We are his sheep. The sheep hear the voice of the shepherd. A sheep will want to hear. One of the best things a sheep can do is when a sheep starts being in fellowship with the shepherd is to learn the voice of the shepherd. Amen. 
Hello, somebody. The sheep wants to hear the voice of the shepherd because if the sheep don't know the voice of the shepherd, when a lion roar and he thinks it's the shepherd, he can just run to the mouth of the lion <laughs> and be eaten up <laughs> for free. Hello, somebody. So the sheep has to learn the voice of the shepherd. So we have to learn the voice of God. We have to be interested. God speaks. God speaks. He said, my sheep, hear my voice. God speaks to us. Hello, somebody. Many people want to prosper. I said, that's why I prosper. Many people want to prosper, but they don't even know the voice of God. You see, there is, we're going to get into it, there is the written word of God, which is his command, that is the logos, and there's the rhema, the nine word of God. You know, like Peter, God, Jesus had to tell him, say, go cast your, your net into the sea to catch a fish. That one is not written in the Bible. It was Jesus that spoke to him. Jesus speaks to us. God wants to speak to you. You're going to learn how to recognize his voice. Hallelujah. The Bible says the, the Lord speaks, you know, but you have to be in an attitude to listen. Some people are not, you see, if you can't even hear if you don't have a readiness to listen. Yeah. It's a posture. That's why I say your attitude. Lord, speak, Lord, speak, Lord, speak. What is God's what, what, what is God saying? You need to have a posture that is ready to listen. If you don't even know that God speaks, some people don't know that God speaks, so they are not in a readiness to, to listen. Hello, somebody. Yeah, they are not in a readiness to listen that God speaks. You know, um Psalm 85, verse 8. The Lord speaks. Do you hear his voice? Do you know his voice? Have you recognized his voice? So don't just say, don't just, oh, God speaks. One of the things that God does most is talking. In fact, God doesn't do anything more than talk. Everything he does is by talk. It, it, all God does is words. He doesn't do anything. God doesn't move a hand to do it. He just speaks. Yeah. <laughs> and he will speak to you. I say, he say, he say, look at the psalm. He said, I will hear what the Lord what, will speak. Someone say, I will, I will hear. In the name of Jesus, you go, you're going to begin to hear in the name of Jesus. I say, you're going to begin to hear. God is hearing your hearing this morning. God is opening your ears this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I said, God is opening your ears this morning. You're going to begin to hear. I say, you're going to begin to hear. So I say, my ears shall hear. What the Lord will speak. He said, for he will speak. He will speak. God will speak. He will speak peace to his people. He will speak to guide you. He will speak to instruct you. He will speak to help you. Yeah. Speak to his saints. But let them not turn back to folly. The Bible said, Jesus was speaking, I think, in one of the scriptures. He said, these people, they have ears, but they hear not. They see they understand not. Least they should be changed and they should be converted. If you can't hear the voice of God, you might not be able to really swim in the prosperity or the blessing plan that God has for you at the maximum. And maybe that's why a whole lot of people, when you talk about God being blessed, they are like so religious, they are like, oh, I've not seen any blessing. Because when he's speaking and you can't follow his instruction, you can't follow his guidance, you can't follow his, you know, his promise, is. How can you be blessed? Amen. Can I hear you? Amen. Amen. Yeah. So you have to cultivate a hearing for God's voice. That's the key. If you obey my voice, all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. So among the greatest things you can desire in your life is a readiness to hear his voice. Can I hear you? Amen. Amen. Yeah, when I first gave my life to Christ, amazingly, by the help of the Holy Spirit, it's a gift of God. I think the first book I ever read in my life was how to recognize God's voice. When I gave my life to Christ, I, I don't know, the Holy Spirit just you know, orchestrated it that way. And I can't even remember the author of the book. I can't remember the, what the book is. And I've tried to look for that book again because I, I don't know even how I got the book. But that's the first book I read when I became a Christian. How to recognize God's voice. And that has helped my life till forever. Because, yeah, you got to hear what God says. For, for the Lord, for I will hear what the Lord will speak. 
the blessing will be delivered when you can hear what God is saying. And the Bible says, God speak in John chapter 10, verse 4 to 5. He said, when he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for what they know his voice. The sheep know his voice. A stranger's voice, they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they know not the voice of a stranger. How do you know the voice of a stranger? The best way to know the voice of a stranger is to know your father's voice. Don't try to study the voice of a stranger because the stranger can come with all kinds of voices. You must say there are many voices in the world. None of them is without signification. People speak to you every day. You can tell. When Peter began to speak, to Jesus. Jesus said to Peter, get behind me Satan. How? Because yes. it was Peter talking mm -hmm. but it was Satan behind. Yeah. Hey! <laughs> and many people because the voice of Satan he said he can masquerade, he can change, he can pretend, he can, uh, some people mimic people's voices. You have to know the voice of God. Yes. Yeah. So that when he speaks to you, Jesus said, I'm going to the cross and that Peter said, God forbid, this will never be your portion. We take authority over every satanic plan to take your, to cut short your life. He said, hey, get thee behind me, Satan. He could recognize. Yeah. He said, yeah. He said, I do nothing for whatever I hear my father say. Those are the things I do. We have to cultivate in the church, in your life, forget about it, in your life, cultivate the the readiness. Say, Lord, I want to hear your voice. Can I hear you? Amen. I want to hear your voice. The Bible says in uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse number 7, Revelation 2, verse 9, Revelation 2, verse 11. It says, let him that have ears hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Have an hearing to hear what is the Spirit of God saying to the churches. Most times a whole lot of people when they hear God, when they say they hear God, is always in a place of disagreement. Most people who claim to hear God, is uh, the voice they hear is always a disagreement, uh, <laughs> rebellion. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Yes, yeah, the Lord will speak peace. To, he will speak peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you there? He said, Let him that have here hear what, what the Spirit say it unto the. So the Spirit is always speaking. God is always speaking. That's why we come to church to hear what is God saying right now. What is God saying to you? God is speaking to you. That is your time to be blessed. It's your time to go to the next level of increase, of favor, abundance. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Don't let the devil talk you out of God's blessing plan for your life. Don't let the devil talk you out of the miracle plan of God for your life, the increased plan of God for your life. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Yes. I love what Habakkuk said in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1. He said, I will stand upon my watch. I will set me upon the tower. I will watch to see what he will say. I will watch to see what he will say. He has so learned the voice of God that he can see the voice. <laughs> Not just hear, but he can see the voice. That means maybe it's, maybe it's maybe reading the lips of God. What is the... Yeah, you see, we have to be in a readiness to hear what the Spirit say yet to the church. God is always speaking, and in the name of Jesus, you shall begin to hear the voice of God. I say you shall begin to hear the voice of God. In Isaiah chapter 15, verse 4 to 5, it says, The Lord has given me the tongue of the learner that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He said, He wakened me morning by morning. He wakened my ears to what to hear as the learned. Yes. He, what, he wakened my ears to hear. So every morning you wake up, one of says, Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Lord. Yes. What, I, what, what would you have me do? Yeah. What are you saying to me? Yes. Have that because you see, you have never been in the day. You don't know what the day is like. Don't wait before your day happens before you begin to set 
you know, the agenda for the day. Let God set agenda for the day before you go and meet people that will talk you out of God's blessing. Talk sorrow into your life and pain. Let God speak to you. Hear what God is saying in the morning. So when you wake up in the morning, have a readiness to hear. What is the Lord saying? Good morning. Lord, what are you saying? You see, when you are not ready to hear, God will not speak. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Because sometimes he'll be speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking. If I'm speaking to somebody, I'm talking, 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 talking. And the person never responds to what I'm saying. What am I going to do after some time? I'll just stop talking. <laughs> Hello, somebody. And God will be talking, 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 talking. But we're not hearing. We also are talking, 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 talking. We're not hearing God. Hello, somebody. He says, money by money, he would let my ear to hear. As a learner, the Lord has opened my ear, and what I was not rebellious. The next verse, I was not rebellious, neither was turned back away. When God speaks to you, one of the good things about it is that learn to be prompt, learn to obey, learn to be prompt. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah, many years ago, when I was going to come full time ministry, I, went, I wanted to go and pray. I told my wife, I said, for three days, I'm going to be in this place. Don't look for me, don't wake me up. Don't, don't knock on the door. Don't, when, I'm, uh, when I'm done, I'm going to come out. I want to pray to find out, is it the will of God for me to go full-time ministry? I want to pray and fast. So I went to our other session of the house. Entered the room. I knelt down. Shaga de ba de ba ya ba shaga da ba. Began to talk to God. Moment I started talking. God said to me, son, if the, your presidency in your country ask you, give you an employment, how many hours, how many days are you going to pray for you to accept their employment? I said, I don't think I will pray. Because I just think that's a breakthrough. He said, so I, the God of heaven, have called you to come and work for me. Now you are, want to pray. How many days? <laughs> I just got up carrying my Bible around. around. <laughs> You see, a whole lot of prayer time can be reduced through active conversations. Oh, you're not hearing what God is saying. <laughs> what you are praying for, if you hear God's voice, it might be easier for you. Yeah, a whole lot of, a whole lot of, yeah, a whole lot of. Uh, Prayer time can be shortened through conversation when you begin to recognize God's voice. Yeah. And you're going to begin to recognize in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That was the end of my wife. Said, I came and my wife said, oh. hey, three days. I said, I said, not even three days. The Lord has spoken. God has spoken. I heard him. Let the church say, Amen. And 20 years strong. <laughs> what he has said is still standing firm. Hallelujah. Bouncing in the Lord. <coughs> All kind of blessings and breakthrough and open doors. 20 years strong. I hear God's voice. It make it your asset because he said, All these blessings shall come upon thee if you shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. And I see blessing coming upon your life in the name of Jesus. He said, Without which way you go, whether you turn to the left or the right, you know, uh, Isaiah 30, 21 to 22. Isaiah 30. Am I preaching God? Are you getting blessed? Oh yeah. He said, although he said, though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not your teachers be removed from you into a corner anymore, but your ears shall hear the teachers. And that ears shall hear your your eyes shall see your teacher, and your ears shall hear what a word behind you say what this is the way walking it. There's always a way to walk, there's always a way to go. Hello, somebody. Yeah, when you turn to the left or to the right. The voice of the Lord is very powerful. Hello, somebody. Yeah, it was the voice of the Lord that led Abraham to become the father of blessing. Because he heard the voice of the Lord. In Genesis 22, from verse 1 to 2, the Bible says, it came to pass after this thing that God did tempt Abraham and said, God said to him, Abraham, he said, here I am, I said, take your son, your only son whom you love. Go to Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering. <laughs> Upon one of the mountains, I will tell you. And Abraham got up and departed. And in verse 16, look at it there, verse 16. 
I God said, by myself have I shown because you have done this thing, and as what I know will tell your son, your only son, that in blessing I will bless you, in multiplying I will multiply your seed as the stars of the heaven, right? And as the sand on the seashore. And what thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and what in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because what? Thou hast obeyed my voice. You see that? Thou hast obeyed my voice. So the blessings of Abraham that we are singing, Abraham's blessings are mine. They are mine now. Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed in the evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. The, the blessing came on Abraham because he obeyed the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord. Hello somebody.